And Jonathan, I'll be happy to turn it over to you for introductions. Definitely, definitely. I'm going to go ahead and share our screen with our um, PowerPoint here. And it'll just take me one second. And let me know, can everybody um, see our beginning screen? Awesome. So, start off um, with a little bit of an introduction. Um, I'm Jonathan Gideon. I am the site manager for Humankind's uh, Richmond programs. Um, we offer our Ways to Work program, which is a character based vehicle lending program that helps people build their credit. Um, so, we do quite a bit around budgeting and financial goals in that program. Um, and then we also offer our Financial Opportunity Center program, uh, which focuses on helping individuals work towards big picture goals uh, by focusing in three areas, um, one of employment, one of financial, and then the other is access to benefits and resources. Um, so we do quite a bit of work in the community in this area, and our programs are work open to Richmond area residents, including the surrounding counties. Um, we do quite a bit um, with um, different school events and individuals um, within the school system, parents, teachers, all those sorts of things. Um, so if there's ever a need, please do feel free to reach out or um, if you know of someone, feel free to refer them to our services. Um, personally, myself, um, before I started with Humankind, I was a credit counselor um, for about 10 years and worked in everything from basic budgeting um, to helping people who were behind on their mortgages. Um, so I've done quite a bit of work um, in this area, and then I've been with Humankind now for about four years providing our services here. Um, and with that, I will go ahead and um, start our presentation. So the first step in save, spend, achieve is setting a goal. Um, and really what we need to start out by doing is asking, what is it that I want to achieve? Um, so focusing in and saying, OK, what is my big picture goal going to be? Um, and when you're looking at goals, you have to in the beginning what type of goal it is. Is it something that's a short term goal or is it something that's more of a long term goal? Um, what I like to do is um, really kind of focus in on long term goals, um, but look at short term goals that can lead up to those long term goals. Um, and those are going to help you meet your savings goals um, to really achieve whatever your long term goal is. So if you break things down um, into smaller bits and you create short term goals out of those bigger long term goals, it can really help um, you accomplish those longer term goals. So some examples of that would be, um, you know, you want to purchase a car in the future um, and a car purchase is usually a very large purchase, um, but you want to start saving towards a down payment for that. So it might be you take that long term goal of purchasing a car in the next year or six months. Um, and you break it down into I'm going to save $100 a month towards purchasing that car. Um, once you've broken it down, um, it's important to kind of decide and narrow things down even more. Um, and I always recommend focusing really on one goal at a time, especially if it's a big picture goal. Um, really, there's going to be so many things on your list. The first thing you want to do um, is kind of prioritize. So if you've got a lot of goals that you want to do, really focus in and say, OK, what's what's my most pressing goal? What is most important to me? Um, what is the goal that I want to make happen? And then start working towards that. Um, really define out and set specific measures for yourself. Um, so when you're planning, be as accurate and precise as you can um, to take a look and say, hey, you know, my goal is I want to have $120, um, you know, by Christmas and I'm going to save $10 a week every week. Um, and being precise helps you set a very specific goal in those smaller short term goals. Then in that longer term goal, you're going to be more likely to accomplish that big picture because you've broken it down into those little pieces. It's a lot more specific than just saying, hey, I'm going to save some money for Christmas. Um, so that's something that can be very valuable. Um, 
you want to measure your performance. So if it's a longer term goal, just going back and checking, you know, whether it's weekly, whether it's monthly, um, you know, set some waypoints along the way um, and, you know, look at here's some indicators that I'm on track towards meeting my longer term goal um, by breaking that down and then reward yourself a little bit. Um, you know, do a little celebration, um, whatever kind of works for you for that reward um, so that you know you're making progress um, towards that big picture goal. Now, you always want to be practical um, in setting your goals. I always tell people and, and people tend to be very aggressive with their goals, um, but I say, you know, set something up that's practical. It's something that you have to be able to make work for you. Um, the biggest piece of advice I can give someone is to make sure that that goal is something that's actually achievable. So you wouldn't want to say, I'm going to save $100 a week if that's not realistic for you. But you know, if 50 or $75 a week or maybe even $10 a week is something that you know you can do, set that goal and make it achievable, make it something that's practical because in, in goal setting and working towards an achievement, um, if you set yourself up to, a, to be too strict or something that is too hard to achieve on the front end, it actually can work against you in meeting that big picture goal um, because you'll, you won't feel like you're making progress towards it if you're not practical in you know breaking down your short term goals and saying, hey, here's what I can meet. So be practical about it. Um, you definitely have to be personal. Um, make it something that's your goal. Um, if it's somebody else's goal for you, you're probably going to be less likely to achieve it um, just because it's something somebody else wants for you and not something that you might want for yourself. Um, and that kind of goes back into prioritizing a little bit. If it's a goal that you want for yourself um, and it's something you really value and it's something you put at the top of your list, it's something you're going to be much more likely to achieve. Um, and then the other thing that I always like to say is make sure you write down that goal. And that is also part of being precise. Um, you know, the, they say that the difference between a dream and a goal is that uh, a dream is just a thought that you've had and a goal is something that you've written down and you've mapped out a plan. So that comes into being precise as well. But the biggest thing on this list is to stay positive. Um, no matter where you are with that goal, um, always be positive and always know that you're working forward towards what that goal was that you set for yourself. And, you know, if there are setbacks, just stay positive, readjust the plan and keep moving forward. So the next topic um, I wanted to touch on is savings. Um, so you have to save um, towards meeting a financial goal. Um, if it's a big picture financial goal, sometimes those savings are more than others, um, but it's important to define what savings means and talk about some tips on how you might be able to save um, towards that big picture goal that you're looking to achieve. So what is savings? Um, basically, savings is money that is left over after all your bills have been paid and you've paid expenses. Um, it's income that you're not spending and you're able to set aside. Um, so what you need to look at is what current spending is. Um, if you don't already have a budget, I know budget's a bad word, but if you don't have a budget, um, it's good to set one in place. Um, and there's a lot of resources that are out there. Um, I even have a budget sheet I'd be happy to share um, at the end of the call with anybody who would like an email um, that goes through and it looks at, you know, the income versus what you have going out. Um, but savings is really just what's left over and in income that you did not spend during the month. Um, you can put money aside in a bank account. You can save it as cash. Um, one thing I always like to recommend when people are working towards a savings goal is to put the money out of sight and out of mind. Um, one method um, that I prefer, and I use this myself, um, when I have a savings goal, I actually will have a separate account at a credit union um, that I've opened up, and I purposely have made it to where I don't have access debit card and the money goes um, straight into the account and all I get is the monthly statement every month um, online so I'm not monitoring it 
um, super frequently, just enough to make sure my deposits are making in there. Um, but I set up automatic deposits from my paycheck um, to be deducted, and most employers will allow you to do this, where you can put you know, 15 or $20 aside from each check going automatically into um, an account. And I've set this account up at a credit union that's separate from my um, normal bank that I use for just about all my transactions. Um, because I'm less likely to look at it or transfer money to my other accounts um, than I would be if I had that account set up with my personal bank. So it, what it does is it helps me um, to automate my savings goal um, where those amounts are going in without me having to do anything. They're automatically coming out of my check. Um, and when I look at how much I'm paid, you know, I have already taken those funds out. Um, so I've, in effect, paid myself first, which is something we'll talk about a little later. But um, I put that money aside. I haven't had to do anything to put it aside other than set up a one-time transfer. And that money is somewhere that is out of sight and I can keep out of mind. And it's in a pot building um, towards my ultimate goal. Um, one big thing that is also involved in savings is reducing um, your expenses. Um, these can be things that are reoccurring expenses that come up every month, and they may also be things that are more discretionary spending, like going out to eat, um, you know, every once in a while, or, you know, possibly going to get a movie. Uh, but savings is really something that you should think of as a revolving cycle. Um, you're saving, you're building up those funds, you spend them, and then you move on to the next goal, um, and you work towards achieving that next goal. So how do you save? Um, I talked a little bit about a strategy of putting money out of sight and out of mind, um, but really the big picture here is to try and live within your means. Um, and a lot of that is you know, set towards knowing what you have coming in, what your expenses are going out, um, and then even aside a little bit for emergency funds um, and leaving enough of a buffer in your budget so that you have money if something does come up that was unexpected. Um, it, it can be something that, you know, helps you plan for bigger things that, you know, are things that you maybe didn't anticipate. Um, but you do also have to take into account not only those things you didn't anticipate, but also things that come every once in a while. Um, so you do want to make sure that you're factoring in for things like car taxes um, you know, that come once a year um, that aren't like every month, but if you break them down and you put a little bit aside in a savings, um, that can help build up. Um, and then it's not one huge expense all at once. Um, the other things I like to say is, you know, know where you are um, with your, with your um, accounts each month. Don't spend it if you don't have it. Um, find alternatives. Um, you know, something I, you know, used to recommend is in, instead of going out to lunch, um, you know, pack something. Or if you um, had planned to meet friends out somewhere, instead of going out, um, maybe ha have dinner at a friend's house instead. Um, with social distancing, maybe do it outside. <laughs> um, so you can, you can still have that um, experience and, you know, get to be and spend time with your friends. But Maybe it's not something where you have to spend a lot of money um, at a restaurant. Maybe it's something where you can um, just bring over, you know, something to supplement or come together to have a kind of a group meal, if you will. Um, but take care of what you own is another um, key thing that I like to recommend. If you only have to buy it once, um, you're not spending as much money on it. Buy good quality things. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be the most expensive thing, but look for something um, that lasts. And I like to um, Google anytime I'm making a major purchase, I will I'll put in whatever it is in Google and actually look and see, um, you know, I'll, I'll type in whatever that item is and I'll say, problems after it. Um, and that way you have a good idea if a lot of people are having specific issues um, with whatever it is you plan to purchase, or you can get an idea of, you know, if it's got good reviews, check the consumer reviews. I know Amazon, we all shop on Amazon. <laughs> um, you know, really take time to look at the star rating and what people have said before you purchase to know if it's something that's going to last. Because um, you really want to make sure you're getting good quality um, and good value for what you're paying for. Um, if you can find things that are in good condition, 
condition. Um, you know, discount stores, garage sales, thrift stores, consignment shops, all those types of um, stores and methods of purchasing things can be great ways um, to get things. Um, if you're confident, um, you can DIY it, um, different home repairs or lawn care. I would say, you know, stick to basic things. Don't dive into the most complicated projects on the front end. Um, but, you know, if there's small things that you're confident in starting or trying, um, you know, those can be good ways to save a little bit of money. Um, but the other thing that often isn't talked about when people are looking at saving money is also additional income. Um, so looking at ways of finding extra income, um, you know, finding a side hustle as a lot of people call it. Um, if you can start your own um, small business or possibly pick up a couple extra hours at, at a, a part-time job, um, you know, sometimes it's things, um, you know, from people babysitting to looking at, you know, hey, I can, you know, buy this and, and enhance the quality of it and then sell it for a little more. Um, sometimes it's, you might have a friend or a family member who needs a little extra help and you can help pitch in and, you know, help them, but at the same time, find a little extra income, um, on top of that. So it's really not just reducing costs, but it's also finding ways to bring in a little more money. Uh, and then the key thing there is putting that money aside and putting the savings that you've either gotten through reducing income or, um, I mean, not reducing income, sorry, reducing expenses or increasing income, putting that money aside um, so that you can really put that in your savings and, and not spending it right away when you get it. Um, that's the big key is, you know, putting that money um, in a savings account, setting it aside towards your goal. But again, you want to be realistic. Um, and I always say, you know, don't be too harsh. Maybe it's something where you put a percentage of that aside and you save a little bit of fun money. Um, for yourself, um, you know, five or ten dollars out of fifty or a hundred, maybe um, you allow yourself to spend and you put the rest into savings. So you want to be consistent with it, but you also want to be realistic with it and reward yourself at the same time. Um, so the next thing um, that we talk about in savings is creating a spending plan. Um, and I like to use the term spending plan because I, I think um, it's a better way of explaining what a budget is. Um, when people hear budget, uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, thoughts come to mind of restrictions or, um, you know, a, something that's not as quality. Um, budget has a lot of negative connotations with it a lot of times. People can view it as a bad word. Um, so I like to say spending plan instead because really what a budget is, is it's a way for you to map out and create a plan um, for your spending um, each month. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, and a spending plan is essentially just a guideline um, that you're going to follow with how you're going to spend your money. Um, what is very important to do is align your spending with your priorities. Um, and so you want to look at your budget or your spending plan and break it down into different expense categories and take a look at where your money is going and see, hey, is this spending that I have right now in line with what my current goals are um, and what my big picture goals are? Is this spending going to help me achieve what I would like to achieve? Um, so, sorry, I went back instead of forward. Um, the first thing you want to do in that spending plan is really look at what could be counted as income and what is reliable. And I say when you're setting a spending plan and you're, you're creating that plan to save, um, you really want to look at, you know, those things that are reliable and that you can count on in the income category. Um, the other category of income are, is, you know, things I would say, consider it icing on the top or, uh, you know, something that you can further advance your goal, but is not something you're counting on. Um, I'd say, you know, count on the money you have through a regular paycheck or your child support if it's coming in very frequently and you can rely on it. Um, if you have TANF assistance that's coming in or resources like um, Social Security, Social Security, um, if you have those incomes and you know they're steady, definitely count on those and add those up. Um, as income in your spending plan. Now, things like overtime, bonuses, um, annual gifts, um, inconsistent child support, even tax refunds, 
um, you don't want to really count on those items um, because they're not always consistent. They may not come. And if you base your plans around something that's um, and you're counting on it and then it doesn't happen, um, it can set you further back in your goal um, than if you were realistic and based your spending plan on what you know you have coming in. So when you're looking at your spending plan, you want to categorize things. Um, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier. You'll take your income and add that up. If you have a first job and then that part time job, um, you would want to add that in and figure out what your total take home pay is. Um, so you're going off of what you actually take home here. So look at what your checks are. Um, and I would say, you know, if there's an average um, that you have, say you're paid hourly and sometimes you work, you know, 35 hours a week, other times you might work 40. You might base it on a check that was closer to 37 and a half or the 35 even to be conservative um, so that you have a good idea of what you've got coming in as a good average. Once you've tallied those up, you've got your income, um, then you're going to want to look at what your monthly expenses are. Um, and I like to say to break them down into a couple different categories. You have your fixed expenses, um, which some good examples of that would be like a mortgage or a car payment. These are the things that are going to be the same exact amount every month, um, and they're there every month. You have flexible expenses, um, which are things um, are like a phone bill that can go up and down a little bit depending on your usage. Um, and then you've got unexpected expenses are things that come up like an unexpected car repair or medical bill, um, things of those nature. And then discretionary is kind of like your fun money that's going out to eat, going out to the movies, um, maybe buying a new pair of shoes. Um, all those sorts of things are going to be your discretionary spending. Um, so once you've tallied all of those and you've added them up, um, you want to take a look at, um, sorry, it went back again. Uh, you want to take a look at creating your spending log. Um, and after you've gone through that basic spending plan and you've said, these are what I'm going to spend in each areas and you've made sure that it balances out enough to allow for your savings goal. You've really aligned those um, spending items with your priorities and you've said, I'm going to put X amount of dollars into this savings every month towards my goal. Um, you can. A spending log is in effect um, very similar to a checkbook register. Um, in fact, if you're more tech savvy and you prefer um, electronic means, the easiest thing you can do for a spending log is to log into your bank account or cash card statement and you can actually see each transaction that you have. It automatically records it every time you use your debit card. You can see, hey, this is where I spent this and this was what the type of expense was. Um, so the idea behind a spending log is to see where you are at any point and to really stay on track towards that goal. So if your spending plan has said, hey, I'm going to spend this month uh, up to $300 on groceries and, and that's really what I've allowed for in my spending plan, you can use your spending log to at any one point in time say, okay, let me add up where I am with groceries right now. It looks like if I total it up, I've spent 250 of my $400 budget. I've got a left to go, so I know I can spend $150 or less at the grocery store um, and still be on track. And I would recommend doing that for each of your major expense categories, um, looking at you know your everyday expenses, adding those up, and then seeing if you're still on track um, with the goals that you set in your spending plan. Um, now, if you have additional money left over and you're able to create um, you know, some savings and, and really, you know, get in under budget. That's a great way to be able to allow yourself with a little bit of extra fund money, um, especially after you've put money towards savings, or it could be that you just add that on top of what you're doing were to add more into savings um, for the future and get you towards your goal a little bit more quickly. Um, but these really spending logs look really, and I like to say if you have an old one lying around, the easiest way to get a spending log is take an old checkbook register 
um, and just record out every purchase you make. Um, or the other way to do it is to just print out your transaction activity from your debit card or your cash card, and that'll automatically track it. You just have to be mindful of categorizing each. Um, and a method I actually use in, in my personal life is I will um, take different color highlighters um, and highlight each different category of expense. So then I can go back and add it up and see where I am at any point in time um, so that I know if I'm on track um, after I've printed off my um, my debit card statement, my transaction activity, because um, you can do that really in real time and see where you are with any different sort of category or expense. Um, so it's a really great tool to help you stay on track. Oops. Um, and some other tips um, to using a spending log. Um, you know, you do have to really use that spending log um, and be mindful of keeping track of where you are, or if you're going to use um, electronic method, really monitoring your accounts. If you have an app on your phone, you can use that um, really just to see where you are with your spending at any one point in time. Um, using direct deposit that's going straight into your account is another good method that puts the money right in there. Um, carrying small amounts of cash, um, we recommend that because with cash, it's harder to track where it goes. Um, if you're using a debit card or a cash card, you could at any point see where that money went, where you spent it. If you're um, using cash, sometimes it's harder to keep track of those receipts, um, especially now in you know with COVID and everything going on. Uh, you know, I kind of shy away from taking a paper receipt for someone just because you never know. Um, so it, it you know to me it's better to try and use everything on plastic and carry small amounts of cash. It's more easily trackable and there's less of a chance. Um, that you might not remember where that cash went. Um, I also find that if I have cash in my pocket, it disappears much more quickly um, than if I do have it in my card because I'm less likely to swipe my card for a dollar at the convenience store than I would be to you know, buy a drink or something with a dollar in cash um, that I might have in my pocket. Um, but really trying to be mindful um, and you know, just paying attention to those expenses and really doing what works best for you, um, as long as it's going to keep you on track. There's no wrong way, there's no right way to do it. Um, it's really going to be what works best for you. Um, other things are use coupons, take advantage of different discounts, um, different programs that may be out there. I mentioned this before, but bringing lunch to work instead of eating out, you know, can be a great way to save in costs. Or if you're working from home, planning out your meals for the week, um, to really map it out. If you write it out on a calendar, not only does that help you know um, what you're going to have for lunch each day, what you're going to have for dinner each day, but it also helps you create a list when you're going to the grocery store. Um, or even better yet, it helps you when you're shopping online. Um, I know ClickList has been a great way for me to save money in ordering groceries online. Um, because I can see exactly what my totals are. Um, and if I'm looking at my budget, I can say, oh, I went a little bit over my total. Let me look back at what I've selected um, and maybe take out some of these things that I may not absolutely need so that I can stay on track. Um, so really kind of using the tools and things that are out there to help you best plan. Um, but planning can be a great way um, of saving money and really helping you work towards your savings goals. One big thing um, I like to mention is separating wants from needs. Um, when you're looking at something, really think, is this something that I need or I want? As I mentioned with my, my grocery shopping, um, if I'm not on budget, the first thing I look back at is, you know, what are my what are my my needs? Do I have those covered? And then what are the wants that are the extras. Maybe it was a, a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream or something that I've added in there um, that I didn't really need, but I wanted. I might be able to eliminate that want first um, before I look at, you know, tapping into needs to make sure I'm on track. Um, other things I recommend um, at the grocery store or online are looking at the unit prices. Um, when you're looking and you're shopping around, um, see how much it costs per unit because just because something has a lower sticker price on it doesn't mean that you're necessarily getting the best value for your money. The packaging might just be bigger to make it look like there's more in there, uh, but sometimes there can actually be less 
But if you look at any of the tags at the grocery store just underneath the item, it actually will give you a price per unit and it allows you to be compare it to other items so you know whether you're actually getting the best cost or not. And you're really looking for the lowest price per unit when you're shopping um, because that's going to be what saves you the most. The highest price per unit, say it's highest price per ounce or highest price per pound, you're paying more than you would a similar item that has a lower price per unit, um, which would be a lower price per ounce or a lower price per pound. So really paying attention to that can be a good way to save money. Um, avoiding um, late fees at, at any possible way. You know, if you overdraft an account or you pay a late fee on a bill, that's 10, 15, 20, 30, sometimes even $40, um, you know, that you're having to pay that could have gone into savings or been used towards something else. So really paying your bills on time. Um, and I like to use the same method I do with planning out my um, grocery shopping and what I'm gonna eat and plan out when my bills are due. Um, so if you have a paper calendar, um, you know, write down each day your bills are late and really use that calendar as a guide so that you know that um, here's the day this bill's due, I need to make sure I pay this um, so I don't get a late fee um, or I don't have an extra charge or you know, if it's something that goes over, I'm not having to pay a reconnection fee because that can be very expensive. Um, but all things that can be very useful. Um, and the other one I like to bring up quite a bit is don't just shop for fun. First stay in your budget. Now, if that's if that's your thing and shopping for fun, you know, is something that you want to do set a budget for that and say hey this is my fun money this is my you know fifty dollars a month that i get to spend and i get to go out and i get to have fun with it um, but be sure to include it in your budget if that's your thing um, don't spend on top of what you've already planned because that can put you back further towards meeting your goals now the last piece um, is achievement um, and to achieve um, I always like to say, you know, no matter where you are with the plan, um, always adjust. If something comes in the way and there's, you know, you have to deviate, um, you know, make those adjustments and try and stay on track. Say something came up with a medical bill and you didn't plan for it. Uh, maybe you can look at other areas for that one month where you can cut to help stay on track and apply money over towards the other item. Or maybe you can um, call the medical provider and, and see if you can make small payments on it. Um, no matter what it is, try and adjust, try and use your resources. Always use each goal as a stepping stone towards the next. Um, you know, take those short-term goals and build them towards long picture goals. Keep dreaming, looking at your big picture goals, and then setting those small steps to help you get there. Um, and don't sweat the small stuff. Don't let it get you down. Always stay positive. Keep your eye on that big picture goal and that achievement you're looking to make. Um, and then save, save, save. And then once you've spent it, start saving again towards that next goal and keep repeating it. And ultimately, that's what success looks like. Uh, so with everything in mind, I did want to open it up um, at this point to see if anyone has any questions, would like any tips um, or any advice. 